Hello, welcome back to the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Review. We have a little bit of a bonus episode. My girlfriend, unfortunately, she's off taking pictures of famous places. So it's just me, Hobo Tom, and I'm here to talk about SmackDown. But first, I've heard a lot about this stuff, and I think eventually I'm going to try it, try to make it myself. But what we have here, folks, we have your beefy Frito Burrito. I've heard mixed things about this, so I'm going to move up so I don't get things all over the place. And Taco Bell's comes out with some interesting stuff. And this is going to be a cool thing. So here you have your kind of typical burrito. Put you over there, I guess. But kind of non-paper garbage. Let's see. Mm. <coughs> Not bad. Dry. Not too bad. I can probably make this in my house. I have to think next. Probably next month I will try and make this because again, take a look. Only beef, rice, and cheese, I think, or cheese sauce, and Fritos. Not basic, not bad. And only one dollar. Should not talk with my mouth or uh, talk while eating. My mouthful. You're not not bad. I, I just don't see what all the hubbub is about, though. I mean, kind of really basic. Again, I don't know what to expect for like one dollar. But, I don't know, we'll see. I'll finish this off. Then kind of having a nice early dinner. And I do apologize for all my videos being late, but yeah, that's the way it is sometimes. Nothing special. I'm going to finish this off pretty shortly. And the second thing I would like to try, I've heard a bunch of stuff about this. Nacho fries. Let's we'll see how those are. I guess the good news is they come with their own little cheese cup. I should have had this cheese sauce. When I make mine, I'm going to have to put more cheese. More cheese sauce. Mm. That pod just, just dry. The nacho fry by itself. Again, been wanting to these for a while. I don't see what the big deal is. It just tastes like seasoned french fries. See if the nacho cheese makes it any better. I don't know. Not worth it, I guess, but see here. It's like cheese fries in my high school cafe. Really. Not bad. You're not expecting. Oh well, I've got now let's talk about sm SmackDown time. You kinda of saw my food review. I don't see what the big deal is between the nacho fries, the seasoned French fries. And then the, the Frito Burrito. I can make it better, I think. Again, my name is Hobo Tom. And the Frito Burrito is definitely Hobo-rated food. Leave it at that. It was okay. 
I just want to see what all the hype was about. But let's talk about SmackDown, what I'm supposed to be doing. My name is Hobo Tom. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also, you can feel free to leave... Ooh, i got to move my chair. Stuff I should do before I do this. I don't care square before I look funky. And then, also, you can feel free to email... There we go. At hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from from everyone. SmackDown started... <sighs> SmackDown's the better show between Raw and SmackDown. And then later tonight, we have Lucha Underground. Lucha Underground's probably my favorite. Goes the quickest. About three, four matches over the course of an hour. Good stuff. Let me see if I will. Here, here. Get myself together. Leo SmackDown starts off with a Jeff Hardy promo and recap. <laughs> I love I love Jeff Hardy's character work because like towards the end he like transformed into, into Bushweed or or whatever his other character was in Impact Wrestling. That was fun. It's it's, it's good. It's entertaining. Let's figure out which way. There we go. Still not centered. Says. One of these days I'll make, make things work. But yeah, this leads led, led to our first match. Mind blown. AJ Styles versus Andrade Cien Almas. This was an amazing match. This was better than AJ Styles' pay-per-view match from Extreme Rules. I don't know what it was. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think I gave that match. I think a cheeseburger or a surf and turf rating. It was good. It was fun. This match was amazing. If this is what they allow Andrade, Cien Almas, and AJ Styles to do, this is why SmackDown is so much better. This was a filet mignon match. Almas, he can hang with AJ Styles. I mean, there were some great moments. One was um, Almas did the along the ropes, AJ Styles missed a drop kick. Again, just I mean they did a top rope backflip standing moonsaults on, on the ring for on this. The thing is, <clears throat> this is why AJ Styles shows why he's the champion. Because he can do so much. He's not one dimension. He has a phenomenal forearm, the Styles Clash, the 450 splash, the calf crusher. He can really beat you in four different ways. That's that's the hallmark of a really modern day great, especially indie champion. There's there's not just the, the big kick leg drop. Now there's, there's a couple of ways he can win. So you have to stay on your game. And again, this is why AJ Styles is the WWE champion, and this is why he'll probably stay the champion probably for a while. But again, taking nothing away from Andrade Cien Almas, he was amazing. During this, AJ is just better. He has more tools. And the thing with SmackDown is that they're letting the wrestlers open up their repertoire. They're opening up their big book of moves that they can do. And you're seeing moves they haven't done in a long time. Like Andrade, you see, and all this. Granted, we haven't seen him wrestle much. But um, he's pulling out something as, as a Sombra from New Japan, which is amazing. Then we go to a little backstage segment. Aiden English and Lana. Lana has to figure out if she's Russian or not. Um, just kind of, maybe just apologize for costing Rusev the match. It is what it was. He just wants to stay with Rusev. I hope so. Happy Rusev to everyone. Then we had Becky Lynch versus Mandy Rose. And again, this was a good match. Already the second match and a woman's match. Much better than a Frito burrito. Is a cheeseburger. Again. This was a good match. It's fun. I mean, it was a little botchy. I mean, they just sort of kind of worked the timing out. I, I won't complain too much. But again, it was solid action really throughout from both wrestlers. I don't think Sonya Neville got involved that much. She tried to distract Becky a little bit. But again, this was a good quality wrestling match, and they let the two women wrestle. Good for them. I think the other reason I gave it cheeseburgers is because Becky Lynch comes out with a straight fire promo. 
about how she should be next in line for being Carmella. I guess Asuka's kind of done with her run, I guess. I don't know why they've chose to bring up Asuka. Well, I, well, she did everything she could in NXT. Um, on the main roster, she's, she's kind of lost, floundering. We'll see what happens. Hopefully SmackDown, it'll be Asuka and Charlotte. That'll be cool. Even if it is a pre-show. I think the other thing, SummerSlam seems so far away. I think it's like a month, a month and a week ahead. It's like one month, I think, from Thursday. So one month from tomorrow is SummerSlam. So there's a build-up, I hope. Carmella has this drama with James Ellsworth. Oh, you got my mind, man. Yeah, whatever, boring stuff. Again, the, but again, this opens up the fact that with Paige, Paige says if for next week, if Becky Lynch beats Carmella, Becky Lynch gets a title shot. <clears throat> that cheese sauce kills you. At SummerSlam for, for the Women's SmackDown Championship. It was good. At least they kept it really to a minimum as far as recaps and just promos go. When they did the promos, they did promos with purpose. It's like with Shinsuke Nakamura. Then you have Ty Dillinger and Our Truth backstage. And this is one of, especially working in a retail environment or working in the public, you think someone's talking to you and then all of a sudden you see a little earbud on the other side of their head. It's like, oh, it's like, oh yeah, this is, this. and they start the hand gestures and everything. And it's like, do you need help? And like, oh no, I'm talking to someone. And it's like, you feel stupid. But again, this happened with Arch. Arch Truth, I guess, was trying to psych up something, or Ty Dillinger was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah." So again, this led to the Ty Dillinger versus Samoa Joe, and I'm actually kind of shocked because for a while they they bumped Ty Dillinger back down to NXT. But again, this was a really good, fun cheeseburger match. Ty Dillinger started off, he tried to get the real early advantage over Joe, then all of a sudden Joe comes back, squash match. I don't think Ty tapped out, I think he just kind of passed out in the Coquina Clutch, also known as the rear name. Again, it was good. It, it, it told a story, it had build-up, it had lead. It was fun. At least it showcased Ty Dillinger a little bit. And it was fun. It, it just... With Raw... Such a long show, even the good segments seem like they draw on too long, unless they're really good. So you have to be something spectacular on Raw, but, but SmackDown can get away with it. It's a shorter sh shorter show. Again, good stuff happens. Then you have Miz TV, and this was a comedy part. I mean, this was funny. Uh, Miz sets up a wake for Team Hell No. And again, Daniel Bryan comes out of the crowd, attacks Miz, tears down the set. Hopefully this sets up something for, for SummerSlam, or even better, WrestleMania. WrestleMania, The Miz versus Daniel Bryan. And this will just be the first match. Again, they would still have... Ooh, they could really go. So you have Daniel Bryan, so you, uh, The Miz wins SummerSlam. And you have... Survivor Series of the of a new Miz Taraj and a new Team Hell No. Then at the Royal Rumble, you have Daniel Bryan win, which sets up for the rubber match at WrestleMania. There is some good booking for you. Give me credit. It's due. Send me one shiny penny. Ooh, one shiny quarter. I'll be happy with that. But again, it's a good setup. Even if it is just going to be for, even if it is short term and for SummerSlam. I mean, I like to think long term a little bit. Then we had Kofi Kingston versus Eric Young, the New Day versus Sanity. Again, this was a surf and turf match. I mean, the way they allow the wrestlers to really compete on SmackDown is so different. And again, they're, they're pulling out some moves that they haven't either haven't seen in a long time, or it's been kind of in like their repertoire, but but been told not to do. I mean, this was really good. I mean, 
the only thing that, that I can knock it is the stat, Sanity still needs one more Strobe Lights, and two, they need Nikki Cross. If that's, if that's my only complaints, that's pretty good. I mean, it was good, smart wrestling by both wrestlers. Great, great ring generalship by both wrestlers. Amazing technical feats. Again, you have the high rope, the top rope action. A little bit of interference with a little bit of, well, not so much interference, but outside action with the New Day and Sanity. And actually, that cost Kofi Kingston the match because Killian Dane just threw Xavier Woods into Kofi along the rope. That led to a wheelbarrow neckbreaker. Because uh, Kofi Kingston got disoriented. Eric Young Wings, this is great. This is how they really should bring up new talent. Or, well, at least introduce new talent. Because they're, they're making Stanley look strong. They're not making him look weak, unlike what they've done with the revival in the club. Maybe they realize something didn't work over there, and they're trying to fix it. Which is good. I mean, New Day can eat losses for a while. I mean, as long as they win every so often. And if they're entertaining, tossing packets into the crowd, that's good. Then, if Shinsuke Nakamura do, doing some, like, weird stuff and sounding music still playing in the background. But this led to the main event, again, the rematch, which was infinitely better from what they did on the pay-per-view. I just, I still... Again, I don't get it in the fact that the pay-per-view can be so uh, but yet the TV shows, especially with SmackDown, are so much better. Well, you know, it's really the same match. I mean, they could have done this on the TV show. They could have flip-flopped things, and at least it would have led to something. It would be a reason why. Make me, well, not think, but make, make things make sense. Then, I like the fact that one, Nakamura looks good with that belt on. Two, he actually wears the belt. He doesn't put it over his shoulder. He doesn't carry it around. The only, the only way Nakamura should really treat that belt is either by wearing it or by treating it like garbage, like the way Naito did with the Intercontinental Championship. He just tossed it around and said, yeah, whatever. Have the ref open ropes for him. That was still a good, good moment. Ooh, should that be a future gift? No, I saw some videos on my and it was fun, though. I mean, Shinsuke, I mean, they both mocked each other during the match. Jeff mocked Shinsuke. Shinsuke mocked Jeff. It was fun. It was really good back and forth, and it made the match seem a lot longer than it was. I think it was only like 15-some-odd minutes long, but it felt longer in a good way, though. Normally, some matches that are short. It's like, geez, they're dragging this on with headlocks, arm bars. This was action-packed. They did it a lot in 15 minutes. That's what made it feel longer. Yeah, it's just better than the extreme moves. And I think Shinsuke busted out a couple of moves that, that you haven't seen. That's good. Then all of a sudden, Randy Orton comes out. And I don't know if they're going to play up a Randy Orton feud with Jeff or if Orton's there to play mind games with Shinsuke. Whatever it is, Orton came out full here. Pulled Jeff by his ear loop things. I mean, just really healed it up, which was good. Heel Randy Orton. I think he's been wanting to be a true heel for a while. And he has that, that force of personality where he can actually be that entertaining heel. And that was it. SmackDown, again, it was an amazing show. Again, this Nakamura Hardy match, this was, again, a flaming on match. I mean, you book on flaming on, flaming on. So much better than Cheeseburger, Cheeseburger, or Surf and Surf, whatever I get. Like, yeah. Again, I would like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also, um, later tonight, uh, tomorrow, you'll see my recap and review of Lucha Underground. Lucha, 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 Lucha. And this Thursday, you can catch Hobo Tom, the one and only Hobo Tom, at the Multicultural Center here in Daytona Beach for the NXT event. Um, I'm going to see if I can get some pictures. I, I, need, I need to make gifts and some other pictures I can put up. But again, I would like to thank everyone for like, comment, and subscribing. Again, if you're like Christine, who is my most